It has been said that the railroad conquered the West and connected America, and nowhere is that more true than in San Bernardino, California. Being located at the edge of the Los Angeles Basin, San Bernardino was the last link to Southern California during the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad back in the 1800s. The first trains reached what is now Colton in the San Bernardino area in 1875 as the easternmost stop on Southern Pacific's line, and it wasn't until California Southern Railroad reached town in 1883 that plans were made to connect eastward to the Atlantic. Thus, on November 9, 1885, the last spike was driven home, connecting passenger trains from San Diego and Los Angeles. While trains existed farther north connecting east to west, the terrain surrounding the Los Angeles Basin proved a difficult grade for trains back then, and it wasn't until Fred T. Paris, a surveyor and engineer, took up the challenge of making a route through the Cajon Pass. With its steep grades and varying gulches and cliffs, it was a daunting task in 1885. But the route he picked was so perfectly devised that it is still used today, and many an avid train watcher makes the trek to Cajon even now to watch the trains climb up its steep recesses. Cajon Pass, as I mentioned, was one of the few routes into the basin, and as such we had an awful lot of traffic that came through here. So this became known as Gateway Town. The rest, as you would say, is history. San Bernino became known as the Gateway City, or the Gate to Southern California, with the city becoming so fond of the railroad, it even incorporated it in the city seal in 1886. And through it all, San Bernino has had a building that has seen most of this industrial history, both its rise and its fall, in more ways than one, too. And there we have the San Bernardino Devo. Over the years, it has housed many different types of trains and companies, and provided countless jobs for many in the city. The depot has always stood at the corner of Mount Vernon Avenue and 3rd Street, with the first permanent depot being made of wood in 1886. And the depot attracted many businesses back in the day, most notably the Santa Fe Railroad, the Harvey Enterprises, a mainstay of accommodative travel back in the day, providing food at a Harvey House restaurant and entertainment or news, such as the Harvey House or Harvey Newsstands, which appeared not only in the San Bernardino Depot, but onboard trains and other depots across the nation. The depot is also fondly remembered for hosting the Pacific Electric Railway and the Kite Light Rail services and many other services over the years. However, this first wooden structure was destroyed by fire at 11 p.m. on November 16, 1916, in an event that took much of the rest of the city with it as well. The new depot, beginning construction in 1916, opening in 1918, was larger and made of concrete. Expanded in 1921 to make more room for Fred Harvey's entrepreneurial services, the depot still stands today. In its time from 1918, it has been the western headquarters of Santa Fe Railroad until their departure in 1992. It was Santa Fe who was responsible for all the machine shops, the roundhouse, power plant, and smoke smokestack built in 1921 that became part of the depot during this time. Fluctuating from 18 to 20 lines, the depot and the yard, as the area outside the depot was called, would see anywhere from 100 to 150 freight and passenger trains daily between 1918 and 1992. Santa Fe was responsible for a wide variety of freights, but what is most often fondly remembered by the residents of the city were the citrus freights and sugar beets that rolled out from the depot daily to Los Angeles. Test amount to this was the National Orange Show that would take place in San Bernardino in which the railroad companies would be involved in heavily, decking out their engines with oranges, showing the pride of the Inland Empire's agricultural boom back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. It's easy to see how much we needed and used the trains. I mean, before my house was built, it was nothing but orange groves and vineyards. While the citrus groves have largely gone by the wayside, so too has the number dropped in recent years to roughly 100 trains on average per day and the depot that used to connect so many people or passengers dropped from 26 to 2 passenger trains per day. However, the depot today now hosts Amtrak as its passenger line that connects across the country and the lighter mass transit system for Los Angeles, the Metrolink, as it is the end of the line on the Metrolink system. The Metrolink itself stands where many other services existed in the past. The kite-shaped track, operated beginning in 1892 to 1917, and the Pacific Electric Railway, which was around from 1901 to 1961. 
These lighter rail services still captured the notion of San Bernardino being a gateway city, but instead of connecting east to west, this connected Los Angeles residents with the splendors of the Southern California wilderness and its mountains. San Bernardino, like neighboring Riverside, hosted quite the downtown scene in the early 1900s. Featuring many theaters, it wasn't uncommon for Hollywood producers to take their projects for a test show out in San Bernardino before debuting them big time back home. Through it all, the main halls of the depot have seen the coming and going of every type of freight imaginable to westward bound settlers or weekend vacationers from the city. While much of the yard has been cleared away since Santa Fe left town, the smokestack and whistle from the old yard still stand and the latter still being operational. Growing up out here, you tune out all the noise and forget about the history around the corner. With these reminders of the glory that made San Bernardino such a gateway city back in the day, it's easy to see how the depot even has become a museum, not just to the history of itself, but railroads in general, which is fitting, seeing all the traffic and the importance the depot once held, and continues to do so.